Welcome. My name is Philip Gonzalez. I am a Chicano mural historian. Chicano art is American art. The video documentary you're about to view features the work of Ernesto Palomino and Ezekiel Lee Orona. There will be two important historical Chicano murals featured. The Campesino mural, which was painted in 1971 on the corner of Tulare and F Street in Fresno, California, and the Raza mural, which was painted in 1972 on the east wall of the then Madera Theater in Madera, California. In 1972, the iconic Raza mural, which was approximately 30 feet by 48 feet, was the largest Chicano mural on a permanent building in the San Joaquin Valley. The Raza mural was part of the Madera community from 1972 to 1997, when the Madera Theater was demolished. Ernesto Palomino and Lee Orona painted the Raza mural and provide the community with the Chicano mural and art in a public space. The video is a blending of a news documentary that features news reporter Al Reyes and a broadcast story he did in 1977 about Chicano art, featuring Ernesto Palomino and Ezequiel Lee Orona, and a Chicano artist muralist, Fernando Hernandez, and a brief introduction about the involvement of Brocha del Valle, the brush of the valley a group of Chicano and Chicana artists. And also a presentation done in April 2022 at Madera Community College, where both Ernesto Palomino and Ezequiel Arona were present to discuss the history and interpretation related to the Raza mural in Madera, California. This important historical presentation also features special guests. Senator District 12 of the State of California Ana Caballero, and the mayor of the city of Madera, Santos Garcia, and also features mistress of ceremony, Juliana Franco. I hope you find the following presentation about the history of Chicano murals interesting. Thank you. While the music of Latin America continues to flourish, another form of art has been growing in the San Joaquin Valley. Its swirling colors and mystical figures have been appearing on walls throughout the valley in California. It's Chicano art, the expressions of Mexican people living in the United States. Chicano art is unique. The influence of traditional Mexican and Indian art forms are there, but there is also something new, the experience of the Mexican living in the United States. And you can see the results of that in Fresno. The first Chicano art organization in the Central Valley has been formed. It's called La Brocha del Valle. Translated, that means the brush of the valley. But this group uses more than brushes. Its members are into many different art forms, bronze casting, murals, woodwork, silk screening, etc. This organization didn't just spring up overnight. It took a lot of work. The artist who played a big role in getting the ball rolling is Ernie Palomino, professor of art at California State University, Fresno. Ernie Palomino has been around. He grew up in West Fresno, studied art at San Francisco State University, traveled around the country, and returned to Fresno in the early 70s. Upon his return, he painted a mural in West Fresno with the help of another artist, Lee Arona. Located at Tularian F Streets, the mural sparked interest in Chicano art. It was the beginning. Needless to say, at the time, a lot of people didn't know what to think about it. Chicano art had yet to surface despite the large population of Mexican people in the valley. Well, it was uh, pretty hectic. You know, we, we didn't have an audience, and uh, most of the work that Lee and I were doing had to be uh, 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 on a wall, or it had to be art, period. You know, no, in other words, no lectures, uh, no demonstration uh, as far as art, uh, no kind of administration in art. It, it, would, it had to be the real thing, you know, show and tell, in other words. The only way I could make a... An image, create public attention, was to do art, period. Just do it. And uh, I was fortunate to have a person like Lee uh, uh, helping me because uh, it's also very hard to get uh, other artists to see from your point of view. I knew that I wanted to, to be an artist, and I knew that that was going to be my life, but I, I really hadn't run across other Chicano artistas, like, uh, for example, Ernie, that... Uh, really took an initiative into uh, starting the 
uh, mural movement. And so he started uh, uh, doing uh, doing that mural, the first one here on uh, Tulare and F. And he asked a lot of artists to uh, to like come and help him. And and uh, but you know like people weren't uh, <clears throat> the other artists uh, weren't really too sure if that was a, a good movida to do murals because no one no one in the uh, in Fresno or in the valley had actually uh, you know done anything like that before. So you and him jumped into it. Well, actually, he jumped into it. I just he just kind of asked me, and I just happened to be the one that you know kind of like helped him through that. In 1972, Orona and Palomino painted another mural in Madeira on the side of a movie theater. Orona says they had trouble getting started. Yeah, we had to have lawyers, and uh, we got into an argument with the city planning commission. They didn't want to give us a uh, permit to set up scaffolding on the side of the theater. Because, How come? Uh, well, I think, basically, they didn't want to see anything that was uh, uh, cultural, you know, and that, and that was uh, made for and... and for the community, the Chicano community of uh, of Madera, and uh, but we finally uh, we went through a lot of changes there, trying to get that thing together, and uh, eventually, like the the community, uh, the community helped us uh, tremendously. I don't think that a project that size could have uh, taken place without the help of of the people there. You know why the planning commission didn't want to approve this mural? Uh, racism. Yeah. Straight up yeah. racism. Now, I never thought that I would get into a, a pickle with uh, the city of all here in, in Ladero and, and all the hassle that we had to get the... Actually, again, but there was over a thousand petitions. So the jar of nickels and dimes didn't mean anything. The petitions were the ones that were the most important to make this happen. And at that time, I thought, well, it's, it's, it's now or never you do this with Lee or without Lee, but it's going to happen. When you were doing the murals in Fresno and Chinatown and the other mural in Madeira, what kind of reaction were you getting from people back then? Well, at first, uh, we, we spent about a month uh, on, on that mural, and uh, we got through. I remember uh, we were exhausted. Uh, I had spent uh, money out of my pocket, and... My uh, wife was uh, frowning on that, and I thought, well, you know, whatever. Uh, so I've spent two, three hundred dollars uh, out of my pocket, but there it is. You know, I, uh, I've done it. Uh, I don't know if I'll get uh, recognition for it, but soon after that, uh, maybe uh, about a month later, uh, a big article came out in the Fresno Bee, the front page. I, I did that, that mural because uh, I wanted to create a consciousness about art, uh, about this particular kind of art in the community and uh, I did it uh, in that part of town because it was the best place uh, to feel it, you know, to to know that I had been uh, intimate uh, with that area of town. Did you grow up in that area? I grew up in that area, right. So uh, I just related myself to that corner and uh, I, I put the art up as a message, you know, as a way of of, an, of creating a renaissance or beginning to create a renaissance. You had a farm labor truck in that mural. Well, I used to go work on these labor trucks, you know, I would stand on that very same corner and... That corner was used to pick up uh, farm workers and uh, they used to park big buses there and they would load up for a drink of wine, you know, to go out and, and, uh, and do the field work. So, uh, and then uh, later on, I found out that that was a notorious um, heroin corner in West Rosny. And so I just thought, well, one of my students said, well, how come you didn't do something at Flash and Fair? And I just thought, get out of here. And I'll like, that, 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 that. And that's not, uh, that's not, I'm not, if you don't understand this, uh, I'm going to have to write a term paper about all this business. You can see United Farm Workers again marching through um, basically a very conservative Madeira at this point. And um, a small group, however, they represent it and walk through. And we'll see just a few days later, uh, the United Farm Workers will open an, open an office in the city of Madera. And again, part of this process of uh, empowerment that I think the mural had something to do with. The women's movement, the fight against the Vietnam War, the, the, the Chicago blockouts in Los Angeles, the United Farm Workers, but less Dolores worked as hard all the work that she did. 
And that that's when this whole thing came about. It was a, it was it was chaos. There things were happening in our country. And this year was part of that. It's 1971 when we moved to Madeira, this was happening. And this was a symbol of art and our art and our culture and our sense of worth. It was uh, at that time everything everybody was just real you know, really mad. I think uh, most of you had to be mad to, in order to do something, you know, in order to march. You had to see what was going on. You know, the uh, oppression and the suppression that was that was uh, going on, you know, the racism, you know, all the stuff that's going on, you know, that we were fighting against. I ran across racism over in Nala, you know, and, and uh, I saw it personally. And when I got back in the States, it was... Uh, I got let, let out of a town up in uh, North Carolina. Yeah, and under the threat of death, you know. But California, when I got out, I came to California, got introduced to uh, the, the Chicano movement. And I got, I got, I wouldn't be an artist from high school, but I uh, got to know about that for that one year I spent over there. So it, I had to kind of come back and try to get back into, uh, into what, I had to find out about art again, and that's when I met, uh, uh, you know, Death of Gabbaseal and, and Ernie, you know, and Ernie just kind of like, he got to invite me to do that China, the Chinatown mural, and I started painting to get And then from the Chinatown mural, we came to, we was at over here in Moleta, I would be one here, and uh, we just happened to feel like, uh, I just happened to see, so we're looking around for a building, we're going down this symmetry, right? And I turn around like this, and there's this big old white, big old white wall, and I'm going, that's perfect, you know? And so it, so I tell Ernie, if so, the wheel started turning. Uh, so I, I, I'm willing to, to say this with the research that I've done over the years. Based on research, the Badera Russia mural was the largest town mural in a permanent building in the San Joaquin Valley in 1972, uh, a little over 30 feet high, and best mathematical guess is about 48 feet wide. Well, I just found out today the the Vasa uh, uh, was uh, early trying to cut that out. I always thought somebody knew it was been early, you know, came up with it. And very cut the letters out of it today and it's rid of our so uh, they put it up and I showed up a couple of days later. There it was, my son, you know, and so draw. So we start doing the do a mural and then uh, start painting and, and uh, created the uh, sites. The the center uh, was set up. You know, it's just pulling gold and the seashell carol uh, on the top right. Uh, little off in the foot that has a uh, uh, walk sealed around his mouth, you know, which is uh, symbolic of the, uh, without priests, you know, we could talk, you know, and like prisoners in the, in the land, you know, we're kind of really uh, oppressed. You know? I, at that time, when we did this, uh, we were going pretty much uh, full bore, you know, as far as political and uh, politically and, and socially, you know, being conscious of both things that were out around us. <laughs> and uh, Ernie and I were both with uh, Luis about this and the Alpha Government and uh, I, I kind of had the privilege of walking from Chachilla to Madeira on that uh, uh, with Senor uh, uh, Chavez. And uh, that really uh, kind of meant uh, very a lot to me, you know. And these, these such a, I started thinking about it last night. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, our, our own holy man, you know, kind of like. Yeah, you know, he just he's killing a whole. I started crossroad one time that, that we did a performance in uh, Del Rey, and then uh, he was like, uh, it was kind of like a Nora about it, uh, and uh, very inspirational, and it helped me as as far as my my work, uh, doing the art. Yeah, there's evidence that this mural, when it was painted at the time, was actually a motivation. It was an inspiration to others. And it provided, um, for nothing else, uh, for lack of a better word, I, I use the term ganas, for people to, 
to want to um, be part of their community, to be empowered. Fernando Hernandez is a younger artist who came to Fresno from McFarland and was turned on to Chicano art by Palomino and other artists. Last summer, he finished his own mural on the side of a bar at Belmont and Fresno Streets in Fresno. Oh, when I first heard about it, I was, I was attending Fresno State. And uh, you had come from McFarland, huh? Yes, I had come from McFarland. I was enrolled in the art department. I was an art major. And uh, Ray Palomino came from Colorado back then in 70, and he more or less introduced some uh, Chicano art classes. And uh, to me, it was something new. And uh, I even was puzzled to uh, to realize that it was all around me, it was in me, and uh, it was just I just needed a, a push to more or less awaken me from uh, the traditional Western art into a Chicano art uh, style, and I fell back to the Aztecs and the Mayas. What kind of things did you start to do? Well, first of all, I started. Uh, uh, drawing motifs of uh, the Mayas, the Incas, the Aztecs, and uh, through this uh, process of doing motifs, I more or less, uh, I reached more or less, I, I reached the spirit of that uh, indigenous uh, art. One of the things I really love about the mural, although it's too bad we can't see it very well, is that, is that there are symbols there. And they are symbols that you don't understand what the symbols are, then it makes you want to study. In a course that I teach at Fresno State, we, uh, we use a book called Chicano Folklore, and in that book it talks about um, muralismo, mural art, Chicano mural art, very, very indicative and complex um, art from the Mexican mural movement, which was Diego Rivera, was, uh, Daniel, excuse me, David Alfaro Siqueiros, Say Clemente Orozco, those tres grandes, the three great ones, the three masters, is for how they're referred to. And when you look at the Mexican mural movement, it had uh, many, many different symbols, motifs, uh, characterizations of the many different kinds of peoples in Mexico, those that were indigenous and those that were more reflective of uh, the Spanish Castilian. So in, in murals that we saw here in the Chicano movement, we would see uh, motifs, symbols that are reflective from that time, from the, the, the Maya, from the Aztecas, from some of the other indigenous groups of uh, Mesoamerica. It's not a, a mood anymore of, 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 of taking a spray can and, and spraying you know, out of the wall. It's, it's a moment for going on to uh, the classic ideas of medium in, in art, uh, which include you know, doing things with browns, uh, uh, mosaics, and all the things that you know, they are part of making art. So art belongs to everybody. It, it's not just for a special person, it belongs to all of us. And so it, it, it has to have the, you know, how can I say, the, the class uh, for material. Uh, to make that appear and so as a classic uh, piece of history and of art. This wall here used to be uh, marked up with graffiti and uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, profanity. But now this mural has had an impact on the, on the kids here that they are more or less starting to realize that art is, is an essential, you know, it's an essential thing uh, in life. I think about the next generation and the future generations, and I think about my children who will be watching this at some point and saying, wow, my mom was also a part of history. I was thinking about how this, the murals that were painted, probably in rural communities, probably communities where there were disadvantaged children, made art accessible to them, where Primarily, parents might be able to take their children to museums and art places to see sculptures, maybe travel across the world. Maybe our families don't have that same opportunity, but yet these murals was an opportunity for them to see art in real life, for them to experience and know that they too belong, that there was a part of them. And when they passed by and saw those bright, bright, colorful murals, they thought, man, that is a part of me. That is a part of my culture. 
After the Madera mural, there were several other projects by Palomino, Arona, and other artists. There were several murals in different valley towns, a wood sculpture for the town of Malaga, a paper mural in Fresno's juvenile hall. All these works aimed at bringing art to the people, as the artists say. We always did at group exhibitions. We had, there was always, uh, we, there were always other artists involved in what we did. And there was always a theme, you know, we always uh, would talk about something like, say, maybe something was going on, something happened, you know, something social, political that, that needed some attention. And we would pick something out and we'd say, hey, man, we, let's do something, let's do something about this, you know. So we'd get together and, and get, get the space and uh, we had the space shows. So we always uh, did, you know, we always worked together. And it was always for the community. It was always about for people. I thought I was going to stick to easel painting, but uh, eventually I just had to take out my art to the streets, and that's where it belongs, out to the streets, to the people. After uh, spending uh, my 40, 35 years or so of uh, actually believing or having some uh, faith about uh, something about the history of uh, Mexican American people in this country, uh, and I think the murals are a damn good way of of, of stating it uh, out in front, you know. Because when it by the time it gets to the libraries and museums and uh, bookstores, uh, that's always you know after the fact. As I can see this now, it's 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 almost like a, a dream come true because it was it was about Lee. I could have never done any of this without Lee. Even though he, he was a veteran, uh, Vietnam veteran, uh, I could see that uh, he had the, how can I say, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the webbles. <laughs> they were really risking a lot by trying to do this in Europe. And, and going into a town and saying, hey, we want to put a mural up on the side of the building. Um, and the others, we realized that that mural had impact on other things that happened within the time frame in the education system, uh, the newspaper and the community system, as well as uh, supporting the United Farm Workers as they were walking through. So Madera has changed. It's not the Madera that was. Things are happening. We elected the first Latina supervisor to the board of supervisors of Madera County, my good friend, Dante Gonzalez. And how did this all start? It didn't start in a vacuum. I didn't get to be the mayor in a vacuum. Three miles from City Hall, I told people I was picking grapes. Three miles from City Hall. I think it's very important to what I call tell your own story. And um, if, if we don't tell our story, then we are what we call, there's a term, there's an anthropological and sociological term. It's called a historic. That means you, you don't have a history. Uh, so if we don't write our history, if we don't make an, an attempt to garner and write down and document, uh, interview, uh, get photos, then we will be without that history. The inspiration of many, many, many people who came before us, inspired us to step up and become a senator in the in, in California legislature, become city council members and govern our city, make everything happen for a betterment of our community. And then you have a man who used to be great to miles from city, from city Hall, and he's a mayor. I was inspired by Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez, and and I, decided I wanted to be able to help people make good decisions for themselves. And sometimes if you don't have an attorney to talk to, it's very difficult to know what, are, what should I do? What are my legal rights, right? And so um, I'm here today because of that movement. And um, and I think what they did for, for Chicanos at, uh, at the time, because all of the things you were talking about hit me right here, is that um, is that we learned about ourselves. Yeah. And in learning about ourselves, it gave us a sense of pride. And gave us the ability to get out there and say, oh, I have to say that. So, so si se puede, that's right. So, on behalf of the California State Senate, it gives me great pleasure.
present to each one of you the certificate of recognition from the California State Senate. I'm really partial to, to the arts. And, and this is important because many times we don't appreciate them because we're so busy making a living. We're so busy trying to, to you know, keep body and soul together. But that the arts are really an extension of ourselves. That's, that's what uh, feeds the spirit. We want people to know that we also have culture. We have arts. We, we have a lot of things that people... Uh, tend to look at us as just a bunch of working stiffs. You know, we, we, we go beyond that. And so this is a good way to represent that to everybody, to ourselves and our kids first, and then beyond that to the rest of the community. So people will know that there is, in fact, uh, a lot of art. There is, in fact, a lot of, a lot of culture associated with, our, with us and, and with our people.